with my brother Kendall. I'm sailing with my brother Kevin on, on Dead Zeus, baby! <laughs> Hey folks, this is uh, sailing brother Kevin with Gadzooks, uh, Flying Scott 5954. Uh, it is the off season. We've got to get Gadzooks ready to go for the, uh, for the upcoming sailing season starting in January. Um, it's currently mid-October. Uh, it's about 35 degrees <laughs> in north central Indiana. And uh, so today I'm here because I am going to be making a rollover crane for rolling over the Flying Scots so that I can work on the bottom uh, underneath me. So you are inside my barn. This is where we're going to take, take and create the rollover crane. I'm going to give you a walk around tour real quick and uh, then we'll get started. All right. So to start with, we have the time-lapse camera happening up there on the iPad. It's plugged in. It is watching the area where we're going to be doing the construction, which is between these two posts right here. We will be tying it into those two posts. You can see uh, approximately how high the support crane will be. It's about 10 feet. Um, the side by side is in here in order to help stabilize things. Uh, we've got ladders. Eventually I'll have a man lift. Now what the Time-lapse cannot show you is my workbench. It's just not a wide enough angle. So there will be times when I come out of the frame, do some cuts, um, and then come back into the frame and start the, the build construction process. Here's my materials. Um, of course, I've got a, a sack full of hardware as well. Um, it should be a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, we'll get started. Okay, this is a video, short video of the progress I'm making on my rollover crane. We have one joist up, the other joist is not up. We've got the superstructure placed in place. We gotta tie it in to the wall up front and we're good to go.
Hey folks, I am in the middle of winter and it's about 35 degrees and I'm about to attempt to flip over a Flying Scott. But before I do, I have a 1970s vintage Lightning that is, let's say it's seen better days. And I'm gonna try everything with the Lightning first because for two reasons. One, the Lightning is about the same weight and width as a Flying Scott and of course the length. Um, and secondly, if I drop it, <laughs> I don't want to drop my Scott. <laughs> so, hey, we're going to give it a shot. I'll give you a quick overview of what I've got here. And uh, with any luck, we will hoist this puppy up, flip him over, set him on the ground, then hoist him back up, flip him back over, and set him back on the trailer. Uh, because I don't really want to do anything with the bottom of the lightning. I just want to get the uh, get this as a trial uh, horse first. All right, I'll give you a quick tour and we'll go from there. So here is the lightning and I have constructed out of the ridiculousness of my thinking an enormous gantry crane. Four poster, two posts are um, attached to the wall beams uh, so they're not going to move. The other two are freestanding, and I really need to triangulate those, so I'll do that. Two by 12s across, sandwich two by 12s across, uh, and then two two by 12s between them. A couple of two ton uh, chain hoists at the top of that. Zoom in on that a little bit. Uh, comes down to the old axle for the uh, lightning trailer. I pulled the wheels, pulled the tires off. We've got a couple of continuous belt straps here. Um, they're 20 foot long. Um, hopefully they're long enough. Um, they go underneath the boat. Um, I've tried to get them in a balanced position. I'm not going to say I have succeeded, uh, but we'll find out as I go and we'll see how it ends up going. And if I am successful, then the plan is to flip Gadzooks over, and I also own Gale Force 4177. Recondition the bottoms of both of them uh, in time for the upcoming season, and um, hopefully we'll be going fast. Stay tuned. So, <laughs> I guess I'll call that a success. I wouldn't call it a resounding success because I did actually drop it. I dropped it about eh, maybe a foot and it just kind of did that. The uh, boat, once it is fully upside down, is not stable. Uh, and so it needs to, to be very careful uh, and use a lot of padding. And I did not use any padding. But uh, again, this was a trial. This is not the final deal with the Flying Scott. I know I'd use a lot of padding when I put uh, Gadzooks up there. I would call it a success and I know what to watch out so, for. That went well. Now we're gonna do it with a uh, Flying Scott. This boat here is my club sailor, Gale Force number 4177 is for sale for any prospective club member. I got the idea from Clinton Lake Sailing Association, CLSA. So shout out to Dan Leach and Eric Bissell for giving me the, giving me the idea and also to Chris Tesdell for helping me find such a great boat. Anyway, we're gonna flip this one over and uh, see how that goes. Stay. A lot of people wanted to know how I made this hull so good. These, this is the equipment and the materials that I used. I started with the black streak remover followed by hull cleaner, the instant hull cleaner. The black streak remover took away the black streaks. The hull cleaner took away the, the goo from the lakes that I've been on. Uh, the goo gone was 
used to take off any sticky goo, so the stickers that were on the bow. And then Strata Ultra Cutting Cream from Presta with the random orbital polisher and the cutting cloth to, to cut out all of the uh, oxidation on the hull. So these are the products that I used and the equipment that I used to get the hull back to great shape. Now we're going to flip the boat over and hopefully everything goes well. So that went well too. Of course, we had three people helping, uh, at least with part of it. Don't recommend doing it with uh, two people. And I did have to take the board out. It would not flip with the board in. Fortunately, my brother-in-law has a car lift. We jacked that puppy up six feet off the ground, yanked the board out and made it a whole lot easier to flip over. A uh, couple of things that would have made this better would have been a seven foot or eight foot axle with electric drum brakes that would have helped control some of the roll effect. But even with that notwithstanding, it, it worked pretty well. The nice part about independent drums is that the two ends of the boat are different widths, and so they can spin at different rates to maintain a constant rollover. Uh, whereas if you had a rod across, which a lot of rollover cranes use, the rod rolls at a uniform rate and the boat then does not because it is not in a uniform shape. So until I see you on the race course, this is Sailing Brother Kevin with Gad Suits, Flying Scott number 5954, wishing you a very warm and Merry Christmas. Hopefully we'll see you down in Florida. Thank you. I'm sailing with my brother Kendall. I'm sailing with my brother Kevin on Gad Suits, baby.